In this video, I want to cover our installation and kind of general configuration of the Evergreen Instance Analyzer, or as we'll oftentimes refer to it as the EIA tool. So starting point, you can uh, download our, our EIA application from the ServiceNow store. It's a free application. You'll see it uh, has been certified for Kingston, Jakarta, Istanbul. Uh, we'll also be certifying here in London in the not too distant future. <clears throat> Once you request and get the application, you'll be entitled to it. You can go into your specific ServiceNow instances and go to System Applications, Applications, and then go to Downloads, and you should see the Evergreen Instance Analyzer application in your list. From here, you can just do a straight install or install with demo data. Um, either one will work. Once the install is finished, you can refresh your uh, browser or navigator, and you should see the Evergreen Instance Analyzer on the left. Now, just quickly to run down some of the application uh, modules, the review workspace I'll cover in a minute. There's an area to uh, run the reviews and see the reviews as are all collected under reviews. The individual finding records <coughs> have a separate table of records for that. There's also a table of remediation tasks, which we'll show in a little bit. And then if you need to ask questions, get assistance, there is a contact support module that you can use. And then we'll, uh, we'll cover in some of the other videos, defining new rules, organizing them into groups, also using the summarization rules to prioritize uh, the findings and also metric scripts that can be used to weight and adjust the priorities. Um, we're also in another video we'll cover remediation actions, uh, which are scripted actions you can apply to any finding to uh, perform the remediation directly. And we'll also cover in a couple other videos uh, the use of the EIA against target instances or other remote instances, which get defined in target instances, as well as adjusting some of the templates and uh, scripts for generating the PDF reports. But as far as the install, the next step you want to go to is to go to the review workspace. And from here, you should see pretty much an empty kind of uh, review workspace environment. You can go to settings, maybe switch to the application. This is where you can make some adjustments to the settings. One thing I'm going to put in here is uh, quickly our, <coughs> our API key for the PDF uh, web service we use, which I will uh, cover that again in terms of configuring PDFs uh, a little bit later. But I'm going to put that in here. The other thing I want to do as kind of a first step is I need to get the content packs loaded from um, our kind of content pack library into my environment that I've just installed this. So to do this, I first need to request an access token, which is basically a connection uh, authorization between your local instance and our library. So I can say that, and then I usually just click off of this tab, click back on to the content packs, and then you should see a listing of the content packs that are available for install. So our starting point for our install are really two main uh, use cases, the best practice analysis, which is your equivalent of ACE or your health scan based uh, kind of health rules, as well as a service portal readiness um, kind of assessment for those who are not using the service portal and moving from the native UI or the CMS framework into the service portal. So based off of this, I'm gonna click install to install the various packs may take a moment or two to finish this process. And once it's done, I'll get a confirmation that that content pack is successfully installed. I'll do the same for the next content pack, which goes a little faster. And now both my content packs are installed. Now to confirm that everything's there, if I go back to the home page, I should see a few different changes to the page. I should now have a couple of items in my start a new review area because the content packs drive the accessibility of different kind of ways to request these reviews. Before I go there though, you'll also notice I have a new kind of uh, menu that popped up on the, on the far right called alerts. Now the number will differ based off of your environment and some of the number of tables that uh, uh, are defined. Now what's happening here is that our application has a couple rules that are associated to uh, looking at your custom tables and reading data from some of those custom tables to see how many records are there. And in order to make that possible, it needs certain um, authorizations given to the application to allow it to read uh, some of those tables. So some of the list here, you might have, you might have more than one. You might have 70 or 80 different uh, alerts here you need to resolve. And so you can either resolve them, ind resolve them individually, ignore them, or say resolve all. Now, if you do ignore them, you'll find that there'll be some errors you'll likely see in the log related to the inability of the application to um, access and read different tables. All right, so now let's start a new best practice analysis just to kind of show you how this mechanics of this work. Now, when I start a new review, a couple options I have. I can say all applicable, which is gonna take basically the rule set, take all the tables that are defined in that rule set and analyze all the records and all those tables that are associated. But I can also get more specific and say I want to target 
just a specific application. Maybe I have a scoped application I want to run a review against as part of my publishing and uh, distribution of this application. So I can go and choose that specific application. I can also go against a specific update set. So if there's something I'm looking to release uh, from one, say, dev environment to a test environment, I can run a best practice coding uh, on that particular update set to begin with. Also, if I want to go after specific records in a table, I can define the table and its condition. In this case, we'll just do an all applicable. Basically, what that's done is it's, it's, it's created a review record kind of set up with our different components on here, our rule groups, whether or not we're going to exclude out of the box records and any kind of updates that I want to use for remediation tracking. I'm going to go ahead and start the review. And this might take a little while, so I'm just going to let it kind of run in the background. As you'll if I go back to the home page, it'll show kind of a running status. And this will refresh as it's complete. So at this point, I'm going to kind of pause, wait for it to finish, then I'll show you the results. I should highlight while it's running, if you go to the review record in the native UI, and you want to verify that it is indeed running and hasn't uh, <coughs> failed or errored, which you could check from the logs as well. But one thing you can look at is if you go to the review and you go to the reviewed records, what you should see is the record counts incrementing as it's processing. Because basically what it's doing is logging every record that it looks at as it goes through its review. So this is one way to kind of monitor uh, that it is indeed running and not failing along the process. All right, so now my review is done. Let's go look at the results. Now in my case, I didn't have a lot of findings because uh, this is a pretty much an out of the box environment that I made a few adjustments to. So your results are certainly going to be probably more robust than, than mine. But in essence, the types of breakdowns you're going to get are the number of findings by rules. In my case, I had two findings by two different rules, and then also by the individual who performed those updates. And then there's going to be a breakdown by its different categorization or classification, which again, is going to be broken down about five or six different factors. In your situation, in my case, I just had one that were grouped by best practice. Now, I do want to highlight a couple things on here. The total number of records evaluated. This, What this is is not the total number of records total, but the ones that were classified as non-out-of-the-box, considered configured, customized records that were uh, tested and run against different rules. The finding ratio takes of that list how many of these of those records uh, had a finding to them. Number of errors versus recommendations. Errors and recommendations, errors being something that's broken, likely going to throw an error into the log or cause functionality not to work. Recommendations tend to be things like logging or debug uh, properties that uh, are not necessarily recommended for production, but aren't necessarily critical issues that are going to cause your system to come to a screeching halt. And the configuration ratio or the number of configured customized records against the total sample of records uh, that were scanned. So any of these items, I should also mention from these graphs, you can click on these items to narrow in on those particular records. Um, but this gives you your area to have your findings. At any of the findings, I can open up, look at the particular details of where within the code or which properties were evaluated that, that caused the finding, some recommendations as to how to remediate these particular issues, um, as well as there is some scoring that's done for these. And this is where based off the grouping of records and the assignment of errors versus recommendations versus other metrics that are evaluated, we put uh, priority scores to these items to better weight which items should be uh, addressed first versus last. Now with each of these records, what I would ultimately do is I would go and edit the record, make adjustments, mark it as remediated, which is going to test whether or not I have uh, made the appropriate adjustment to clear, clear that rule. If I haven't, I'll get a failed validation. If I have, it'll go to remediated. My other option is I can say skip remediation, which in essence is accepting that condition and letting it persist within the environment. Once I've gone through and completed all the items in my list, my review will move to a complete status. And uh, in essence, I'm done with that process. So I hope this was helpful in seeing both how to install the application, run a review, as well as kind of work in the review workspace to uh, filter and look at the individual items, as well as act on them through the actions that are performed. I will cover more details in some of the other uh, videos I'm going to create here. But this was my first kind of overview to our EIA application. I hope you find it helpful. Thank you.